everyone. Good to have you all here. And for those of you that are joining us on the internet, it's great to have you with us tonight. And um, if we could just pop up the slide that we have there. And uh, our discussion tonight, um, we're, we're looking at the book of Habakkuk in the morning. And uh, we've gotten to the, the mountaintop. And the mountaintop is a real challenge, isn't it? Because it helps us to realize that God has a plan. And that plan helps us to know how we should live. So this evening in our time together, I want us to think a little bit of what we heard this morning as we looked at chapter 2. And we saw that God answered. I mean, that was, that was really shocking in a way, wasn't it? The fact that God actually answers. And I don't know, maybe you're here tonight and you've been praying and you just kind of wonder. Well, uh, I think we found another verse in there that says kind of, it's okay, wait for it. Uh, God's going to be there. But we know it's bold. It's a bold statement to just come right out and say the righteous or the just shall live by faith in the midst of this world that we live in. And so as we think about it tonight, I'm going to pray and I'm just going to ask you, what were you thinking as we begin to work our way through this? And tonight we're going to kind of bring it into current. We've been talking a little bit about the past, uh, talking about what happened in the uh, life and times of the children of Israel and the prophets that were um, declaring the messages of God. But what about today? Is this different? than it was then. If not, what are you picking up as you hear and you think through uh, the text of Scripture, especially like the one we're looking at here? All right, let's pray. And uh, we'll give you a few minutes to kind of discuss a little bit. And we've got a couple songs that we're going to sing here tonight also. Not we, but we're going to hear a couple of songs and uh, go from there. Dear God, we thank you so much for the opportunity this evening just to be together another day, another opportunity to be able to present. God, our, our hearts are, are burdened um, with a lot of things tonight. And not just what's happening here in New Brunswick, but around the world. And we know that there are some major struggles. And not all of it's COVID-related. We know that there's a variety of things that are taking place. And we know that at times that it just seems like we're in this dark tunnel. How are we, your people, to live? What are we thinking? God, I pray that you help us as we work our way through this tonight. We pray for those around us. We ask that you work in hearts and lives. Those that can't be here with us tonight, we pray for them. We thank you, God, for the privilege of ours to be here together in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Habakkuk chapter 2. Any thoughts from this morning? If you were preaching it, maybe what would you have brought out? Or maybe there's another thought that you had. Anyone? Yeah. Right through to the end of the millennium, we still his grace, even in the millennium, people are saved. Yeah. Uh, his grace is never ending, and only God could do that. Yeah, and his grace is never ending, and uh, from beginning to end of uh, eternity, and there is no end, and always extending it to us. What a, what a tremendous thought, and it's the same for us today. Excellent. Anyone else? Other thoughts? After listening to the complaints of the people, realizing what is about to come down on top of them with the Chaldeans, what did you think of God's answer? The just shall live by faith. Is he out of touch? Just another fairy tale? to 
wanted to be in control myself. So I really find that, you know, you know, what does it really look like living by faith? You know, you, you go off in the in the woods somewhere and say, well, God's going to supply my needs, or do I tend to business as the Lord has told us to do? And just, just to have that quiet confidence that God says, yes, it's okay, I'm in control, mm -hmm. and wait. Yeah, controlling and understanding that God is in control and then we wait on him. All right? Anything else? Any similarities to where we live today? Text like this, does this hit, hit any areas of the day today? Is it still the message of the day that the just shall live by faith? How is that going? I think it's already been alluded to. Are you finding it easy? Huh. But is it still the mandate? So then what are we going to do? If it seems slow, right? If we, if we, if we just, like, it's like I'm hanging out here, right? It says, wait for it. Because we know that assurance. We know, we know all of these things. But we struggle, don't we, with these two elements. And we struggle with those right now in the area of how, how am I going to handle this? Like whatever that is. And at this particular point, I, I think in this room, every one of us have a variety of things that are taking place in our life that are different, right? Right? So there isn't one, one size fits all when it comes down to the fact of how God works and deals and works out living by faith. The answer is the same, but it could be a little different for each and every one of us. Flight or fight? Have you seen that at all? <laughs> Anyone given day, I have both of them, right? I mean, it's like, whew. Uh, at one moment, I'm good. You know, I, I'm like, I, I'm, I've, I've just decided that I'm just not going to say anything. And then the next minute, I'm trying to shut it down. And it's just racing. Being reminded, there is another, I don't want to say option because really it isn't an option. There's another way to live, and it's by faith. What is the difference? Okay, here's a little different question. What's the difference when I'm not fleeing and I'm fighting? What's the difference? What have you noticed in your own life? Did it make whatever it was go away? What's the difference? I guess the part one, of one question is, do, will, will we let go and let God? Yeah, it's the grace to be humble and humility to give grace to other people who are either fighting or flighting. Um, because we know that we're caught up in those two things as well. And I find when I am um, not caught up in one of them that I, I tend to not give grace to people who are. There was a lot underneath that mask that was just said and started back up here. Murray, what did you say again? Okay, one of our phrases that we use a lot, let go and let God, meaning that we have to somehow realize in the midst of everything that's going on, at this, at this moment, I may have, and I mean, we're sitting in church, right? And for the, you would think in church, we'd be okay, wouldn't we? <laughs> we usually are until we bump into somebody. 
I mean, I got, I'm, I got a handle on it. But then what do we do when we come across somebody else who is either in the flight mode or the fight mode? It works there too. One of the elements that come out, the difference is there is this, there's a, a, a sense of humility that comes out of this. Would we be able to go a little further and say vulnerability? Because we've been on both corners, maybe even about the subject that this other individual is at. We're reminded of how gracious God has been with us can we extend that grace to somebody who is fleeing and someone who is fighting? What would that look like? Hot topic? One of these puppies. There's, there's both sides, aren't they? There's, there, there are people right now that, I mean, they are, they are just totally, I mean, they, they, and again, I mean, we've been told to wear the thing, right? I mean, it's not bad enough that we've been told to wear the thing, but like, you know, how do you wear the thing is now becoming the operative term. And people are actually coming to the place where they're like, they're just giving up. They're like, well, if, if people aren't going to, they're not going to wear this thing right, then I'm not going to have anything to do with them. Is that sensitive enough? Or on the other hand, we take it upon ourselves to make sure that everybody is wearing it the way I wear it. Now, I've been told that if you, and I don't know how they do it, they somehow they twist this thing right here and they put that over their ears. Do you know that one, that little trick? And somehow or other, it props it up enough so that you can actually get enough air through here that maybe your glasses won't fog up. That's nice. That, that, that was a great suggestion. Except for when I spoke to somebody about that and they said, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of the mask, doesn't it? Because it's not supposed to have any gaps in it. Go figure. I might just well put mats on again. <laughs> I'm not, and again, folks, 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 please, please, please. I'm not trying to step into, I'm not trying to step into a dog's breakfast here. Ooh, I can't believe I said that on the World Wide Web. But I, I think in here, what we're trying to deal with is to help us to understand that the just shall live by faith back in Habakkuk's day. Paul used this same quote on two different occasions, one in Romans, one in Galatians. There were two separate locations all together. Two different, three different areas. And in every case, you see this is a principle of God. There was something about the just. And I'm even going to use the word that was different. Again, that, that's different has been a very challenging word. When I grew up, even as a teenager, a hundred years ago, not quite. The last thing I wanted to be was different. There's a distinction about us. So when we talk this evening for the rest of our time after we sing a little bit, I want us to think, so if I'm supposed to live by faith, does that mean just in church? 
or just when I feel like it or just when others agree with me? How do I live in what Paul says very clearly is a very crooked and twisted world? Is there a better description of this age that we live in? And that's the pandemic, if you really want to know, is that we live in a crooked and perverse world. And it doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot better. However, Lee, can I remind you that crooked and perverse has been there ever since the fall. God's plan, God's word, his vision was very bold. It was beneficial. But folks, it is the way for us to live in this world. Think about how then shall I live? What is the best response for me? And you can fill in your own blank because there's going to be different illustrations in your life than what I can dream up of. But I think all in all, God has a plan for us. So let's sing a couple songs here. David. Announcements. Wednesday evening, uh, sorry, I should be having this thing up, shouldn't I? Uh, Wednesday evening, prayer meeting is at 6 o'clock, and on Saturday we have the men's Bible study at 7 a.m., and I think Al's talking about, what do you call it, James chapter 3 this week. And our annual meeting is January the 27th, that's next Wednesday night. So there's nomination lists posted on the board if you want to look at those. And there is a quarterly financial report at the back of the church and a budget proposed at the back of the church. I think there's a white sheet and a green sheet. So if you want to pick those up to look at them, and I think they'll also be emailed to folks. And I was also supposed to mention the offering. I forgot that this morning. <laughs> but anyway, there's plates for the offering at the back, or you can send it through email, donate at peoplesmb.ca. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's all. And can the
Thank you very much. Two great songs and um, helping us to think through. So the difference. Whoop, sorry. The difference when I live by faith. We see, and again, I, I can't fill in the blanks for you tonight. There's a natural tendency for us to want to either flee or fight. And there's everything in between, folks. How is it that God wants us to live? He wants us to live by faith. So as we think of that tonight, a couple of things just wanted to draw your attention. And we understand that faith is not in and of ourselves. Sandy just reminded me of that as I sat down. Is that, is that true, right? It's not about us. It's about the one who is... <laughs> able to take care of whatever that situation is. We have family scattered around the world, as you know, and we want to see, they, they talk to us and they ask us and they, and it's like, they're looking for help, right? They're looking for some kind of advice. For those of you that have kids that are <clears throat> no longer children but adult age and have their own households, it's a little different situation, isn't it? And you want to try to help them. You want to try to encourage them. But the just shall live by faith. There comes a place even in our counsel with people. The desire that we have for them to change, the desire that we have for them to maybe do something that we think is right, and, and it could very well be the thing to do. And with family members especially, do you find it, to, you, you got to be a little more, is the word discreet? Covert? I don't know what, I don't know what the, but it's like, because you've already been down this road with them a hundred times. Mine, as a kid, was, why don't you pick up your socks? I did a whole seminar taught on why I don't pick up my socks. And you know what my last slide was? I don't want to. I mean, have you ever come across that with somebody? I mean, I, I'm, we're thinking even not just COVID-related, but just, I mean, salvation. Have you, have you had that with a friend? Someone that you love, someone that you want to see go to heaven. We can have the same combative or the same, well, or we can live by faith. It's not in my abilities to be able to convince anybody. 
It's in my understanding of the one who can. And that's the dose that I need. That's what I need in my life every day. It's to be constantly reminded, I can't do all these things. It doesn't give us license to roll over and play dead. We still plan, we still drive, we still do these various things. We move, we lead, we do it. However, there's a change. As we think of that, I wrote this this afternoon thinking, do you remember when we used to get together? That was a long time ago, without a mask. And, and we used to talk about things like sports and vacation and family and work. Yeah, and we threw in a little bit of health in there. School and music, movies. But have you noticed something different? There's something changing. There seems to be this constant element right now that there is a host of, uh, it's fear and fight that is out there right now. And the subject of becoming a lot more tenuous, they're becoming a lot more intense. And some of the questions, they, they come around and you're starting to think a little bit more about my liberties and my rights. And we're hearing this on the American side right now and watching it is coming out and, and the Canadians are having a heyday with it. We're talking about freedoms and tolerance. We're talking about truth and fake truth and all these kind of things. Censorship. I think the, the only person that I was hearing talking about any of these things was the little magazine that we get from uh, Art Sadler. The Sound of the Trump. Any of you read that lately? He's been exposing all of this that's been going on. It's nothing new, folks. But he was one voice in the middle of it all. And now all of a sudden, everybody is starting to change the tune and they're beginning to talk and we're seeing a lot of shame and blame that's happening in the midst of it all. The answer is still the same from God. The just shall live by faith. Or in the ESV, the righteous shall live. What is it, Sandy? Sandy? By his faith. His faith in God Almighty. I said this last week, the Bible is reading a little differently these days. <laughs> um, when we're challenged, when we're challenged by all these different things and feelings, and a lot of them isn't just the people, it's my own attitudes. It reads differently. We're going to look at the book of Philippians for just a minute and just think it through from a contextual standpoint, first of all, and recognizing the fact that Paul is a great author, <laughs> but it's not, God, it's not Paul's words. These are the words of Christ through him, through his experience. This is the end of his life of all the people who probably could be bitter. Wouldn't you think it would be Paul? And he lived under the wicked rule of Nero. Four years of being imprisoned for some of those things on the very bottom, rights, freedoms, violation, being a Christian. Paul was imprisoned. We would say wrongfully. But yet there he is, and the epistle is an epistle of joy. Now, I think we've made this before. Is there a difference between happy and joy? Only if you're a Bible reader. We got this concept that life is to be happy, happy, 
joy, joy, down in my heart, right? <laughs> Used to sing that song. Habakkuk had a burden. Do you remember we read chapter 1 of Habakkuk? That's how it starts off with a burden. I can tell you that there have been times in my life as in your life when the circumstances that, in, that you find yourself in are not happy, happy, happy. If anything, they're ugly, ugly, ugly. But there's something about joy. Joy is that internal element that keeps us going one step in front of the other. It's found and bedrocked within the faith that God grants to us. The book of Philippians, just a little outline. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these books. This, this book, there are four key verses that we probably all could pull out right now. But when you put them in the context and you look at what the purpose of Philippians was all about, it helps to remind us, number one, this entire book, chapter one, is about making Christ your life. You got your Bible right there? Verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Does anybody want to give any kind of a thought as to what Paul is saying here? Is he being a martyr? Or is he saying, I owe everything to Christ? He is my life. This is the element to which I think that living in peacetime, we somehow have a tendency to relax. But when you come to a passage of scripture like this and you begin to go through these pages and you're going through something, I can tell you it reads differently. Chapter one gives you what it is. And then chapter 2, 3, and 4 tell us how it's going to happen. Chapter 2 of Philippians is Christ must be your mind. It's got to be how you think. Chapter 3, it's going to be your goal. Christ is your goal. Can you imagine this? How this is going to change the heart of this young church he's writing to from prison. They've watched what happened to Paul. I mean, wouldn't you really enjoy talking to your children about being a follower of Christ, just like the apostle Paul? To be, a, to be a follower of Christ means that you're going to have hardships. You're going to have sorrow right up to death. It's going to be terribly difficult. Boy, that sounds like it. That would fill a church, wouldn't it? And maybe that's been our challenge. We presented a gospel that is partial. It's partial to the people who come. It's partial to the fact that we want you to have the best only from your terms. And we've forgotten that God gave us his son. And Jesus Christ is the hope of glory, isn't he? For each and every one of us. And so it changes the way we think. It changes the way I'm going to live and the goals and the occupation. And folks, I think we've come to this place and I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but this element of, you know, get a good education, get a good job so that you can retire, I think is almost... Not there. I mean, it's got it's to be a difficult thing. And I was thinking of my grandkids today and as they were telling us their age, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I'm glad I'm not their age anymore for a number of reasons, except for the fact I might have hair. But what is their world going to be like? I mean, when, when I grew up, even at that point, there was still the element to which that, okay, if I work hard, then I should get a return. I'm not sure, folks. 
not a mathematician, not a financier. But we're going to have to work hard to get out of the hole that we have created in this pandemic financially as a country. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Apart from Christ, Christ is your goal. In chapter 3, 4, we see then he gives us the strength to carry on. Just a simple outline. But I think in the area it helps to put things together in perspective as we jump into chapter 2. When we think about this and we understand how should we live, we talked about this, have this mind in you. How many verses of scripture do you know that teach about your mind? We think that the academic world today has a somehow a handle on that. Where did this come from? From the very beginning of time, God has utilized what is between our ears. God has given us a brain to think and to reason like no other creation. It's good to be reminded. And we can go down through the verses that I've given here. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall what on it? Why? Why did Joshua tell that to the people? Because they had no TV and internet to entertain them? Because it was the ingredient of a righteous, just person. We could go to Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, and it talks about our mind, the mind of the individual who is stayed on God. What, what is the rest of the verse? What does it say to us? Peace. Peace. Right now, if you're, if you're struggling in this flea and flight, we're reminded God has provided something for us that we can go and look to. Remember? Habakkuk is bold. Write it down. It's been written down. We got 66 books of it. And ladies and gentlemen, we know there is one central theme. It reveals Christ. And it shows a follower of Christ how they should live. Look with me at Second Second Corinthians. Just one. I just kind of. I this is one of my go tos. Um, I think I think I probably have shared this with you at one time or another. Sandy and I were talking about it the other day. Um, <laughs> my mom, she's ninety two. I don't think I've ever heard like when I call her on the phone. She's just. Eh. At 92. She's never, like, I don't think I've ever seen my mom on the phone down. I don't see my mom on the phone. Well, maybe, maybe you know, when dad shot two deer instead of one. Uh-oh, that's on the internet now. Too bad he's in heaven. You're not going to be able to get him. She was a little excited. But for the most, it's like, Neh. I mean, like, that is amazing. And then we started talking about our families. One of the things in my family, I think maybe it was in my dad's background, I don't know. But there's a, there's a, a weakness. There's a besetting sin, weight, how we think. And a lot of people in my family, in the background, they have problems. Been diagnosed as depression, chemical imbalances, all kinds of different things. This verse has been a lot to me. It says in verse 3 of chapter 10, 2 Corinthians, 
For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. Flee, flight. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy the what? Where are the strongholds that he is talking about here? The mind. Every one of us has a predisposition. That's a word. I made it up. I don't think so. Do you know how I know? If I had a glass and it was half full or half empty. It's the way we are. How we are gets these tentacles of strong, of, of domination, of thought. And when something happens, it's almost like it's an automatic switch. And some of us are quick to flee. Some of us are quick to fight. That's the natural tendency. We either get to the place where we're totally overwhelmed. We are with, with fear or we're overwhelmed with anger. But look at verse 5. We what? What do we do with the strongholds? We nurse it. Oh, I like that one. Don't you? I, I like to nurse that feeling. You're, you know, those, some, those, those, ooh, I just, yeah, and I can think it all up and I can really just make it. We destroy arguments. And lofty opinion. And these are directly related against the knowledge of God. Flee, fight naturally is against the character of God. God's people are to live by what? Then it goes on to say, doesn't happen by osmosis. <laughs> this is another one of these things that people say to me that Christianity, Christianity is a snap, right? I mean, you guys that are Christians, it's just a crutch because you, you can't, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't make it out in real life. They don't have a clue what Christianity is all about. Because it's easy to give in to your natural, isn't it? I, I, it, it's a whole lot easier, isn't it? Now, not this isn't the time of year, but the river is out there. If you wanted to, put a kayak into the river, and it's not a bad drift. You could make it to Woodstock. I think I could make it to Woodstock. I'd probably have a nap. No, I'd be afraid I might drown. So anyway, I, but I wouldn't have, you don't even have to paddle. You don't even have to paddle. 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 But when you turn against your natural desires, your innate abilities, you can be guaranteed it is going to be a struggle. And that's the fight that we must fight. If there is a fight, ladies and gentlemen, it is that fight not to be overcome by the wicked one, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The flesh is right there. That's me. I'm my biggest problem. So we destroy these and we take every thought, what? <sighs> the illustration is, <laughs> yeah. how, how, how does a mama cat move her kittens around? She grabs them by the nap of the neck. The quicker I jump into action here, the less likelihood 
I'm going to fall again. Take every thought captive to obey Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So it sounds to me like this is going to be a lifelong objective. These, these are the battle verses, aren't they? For the believer. These are the verses that read totally different today than they did when we were just kind of out there doing our thing and everything was wonderful and life was going well. And then all of a sudden you get the call. All of a sudden life gets changed. All of a sudden we go into the red. All of a sudden we get that big bill and we don't know why we're going to do it. And we are going to be continually challenged. Your mind. And Paul begins to explain it over here in Philippians. And we know that we need to begin to read this book like our life depends, depends on it. Can you look at me for just a minute here? Do you understand what I'm saying here? Is that a different read? Like your life depended on it. That's how this book must be for us today. This is the challenge that I think is coming to us because we have not cultivated all that we need to. We, we've picked and we've chosen and we've cut and we've paced. And we need more. We need the context. We need the background. We need the understanding. We need to take a look what's before, what's after. And we need to look at it as it is given to us as the literal word of God to be obeyed. Chapter 2 of Philippians. So if Christ is going to be our life, we know, as we look in verse 27 of chapter 1, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. That's, that's how we are to live. We come to chapter 2 and we are brought broadside to this element where we must think like him. Verse 5, we see, have this mind among yourself. We read that passage of scripture this morning. We need to go back and take some time, and I'm not going to do it for time's sake this evening. But just think about it. The mind of Christ has in it, verses 2 on down through here, is to complete my joy, being of the same mind, having the same love that Christ has, being in full accord and of one mind. The just shall live by faith was not just Paul's dream. It was his goal, and it is the goal of every believer. But in humility, we see, that we are to do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Verse 3. Flee, fight. Selfish ambition. You know, sometimes in the area when you start, you know, when you get agitated, when, you know, I, even, even this, i got to be careful here, but even in child rearing, but even at a deacon's meeting, we've had it happen. Where we get, and again, we get a little agitated with one another because we have an idea and we like our idea. Now, sometimes there's nothing wrong with the ideas. It usually boils down to how we think about how this discussion's going, and before long, it morphs into something that uh, doesn't resemble the mind of Christ. We live in a world today where we need to count them like ourselves, but also it says in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Let each other, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also the interests of others. 
I got just thinking a little bit about that when there are conversations in the area that, you know, when we, when we engage with people, it's, it's difficult sometimes. And when you're talking to somebody you don't know, that's not a big deal. But when we get into our, it's, it's easy to bring our conversation. Are we, are we listening to what people are giving to us so that we can encourage them? We get down in here a little deeper. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ. And we see the mind that took Christ all the way to the cross. He emptied himself. And, we, and the tendency would be to say, well, yeah, but this is Christ. Is it only Christ? This is, this is the element to which that I'm looking at in the area and talking with one of our daughters here today in the area of their church is thinking about how they can, how they can minister in their community with COVID. And their pastor is, is, is connected and he's done a variety of different things that the community wasn't able to do. And, and the church actually augmented their little community. Isn't that cool? The church did it until the community could get it up and running. We're not going to know if we don't consider the need around us and the interests of others. But we see being found in the human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. But did you notice? God highly exalted him. What a wonderful thing. We could go on further and we look at this finally and we get down through and we read all the different things, but it says in verse 14, do all things. Is that some things? Do you think that that's just, I, I think it's kind of inclusive, isn't it? How are we supposed to do them? Without grumbling or disputing. You notice when I flee, I'm grumbling. When I'm fighting, I'm disputing. Interesting. That you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God. Without blemish. In the midst of this crooked and twisted generation. Paul, in one of his testimonies, he gave this verse in Acts chapter 26 and verse 18. His goal, even then, was to open the eyes, to open their eyes, these people who did not know Jesus, to turn them from darkness to light, from power, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. In the middle of everything that's going on, I need to be reminded of what is my mandate? What is my goal? What is it that God wants me to do? And if you look at that picture, and this is why I picked it, there's somebody watching. There's somebody right now in this community that is looking for hope. And we have the privilege, don't we? Because we are among them. God has left us here to shine his lights. And we know that ultimately... The reason we are here is to share the gospel so that they can know the same thing. So in the midst of masks and vaccines and orange and yellow and doing what we have to do in our own house, in our own lives, let's not forget the just shall live by faith. And there is absolutely no way that a person can ever enter into 
God's created eternal destination unless they too surrender to him. The other thought that I had as I looked at this little picture, and probably the one that is getting, is hitting me the most. Because of the good old days, I think I became lax. And because of that laxness, I think in the area as I am watching, Christians are now anything but the shining light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to just say we need to be careful what we say. When we say it, who we say it to, and what is the underlying reason why we gave them that information. And I'm thinking in particular tonight of social media. I can't believe some of the re-whatever they are, tweets and whatever that are being spread around and they are attached to a Christian's name. We need to be very careful. I, I can't see that our goal is to bring about a new government. Our goal, if you need, is Romans 13. We are to be obedient. Somewhere in the middle of all of this, we need to be reminded. As I go into this world, that individual that I am talking to needs God. Is that good enough? When I say God, let me be very clear, they need to be saved. They need to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ first as their Savior. But that believer that you're talking to, he also needs to be saved. And probably needs to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. These are different days that we live. I like chapter 4 and I'll leave it there. The key verse of chapter 4. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he strengthens us through his word. Engaged with the Holy Spirit of God as we read this book like it, our life depends on it. We put it into practice. So we got a week in front of us. Will you pray for me? I'll pray for you. I have no clue. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not yesterday's news. Faith is what is going to transpire in the future, and that is starting as soon as we walk out of this door. But we have a God who's able, above all else, to carry us. What's your mind saying? Dear God, we thank you that collectively we can agree that you are the great God, the creator of the universe, the God of all comfort, the God who sees, the God who provides. We know that from our individual life. God, there are times when we desperately need to be reminded again. Help us to spend time taking captive those thoughts that would take us a different direction. Help us to control and to discipline ourselves so that we are 
feeding regularly on your will. And God, I pray as we go out of here that people will see us as lights. They will see that, wow, I want to know what you have. And it's not just because we got a brand new car. It's because we're able to live in a crooked and perverse world blamelessly and harmlessly. Oh God, we ask for your help. We look forward to what you're going to do. And because of it, we know you are there. We thank you tonight. Dismiss us with your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.